And now for my next number, I'd like to return to the classics. Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's Rob DJ Bill, and this is my new series, Classic. In the series, I'm going to be touching on some classic, you know, cornerstone fragrances and some vintage fragrances that were released and maybe didn't take off the way the designer expected, but it's a great fragrance nonetheless. So, the first fragrance I'm going to review in the series is Lagerfeld by Carl Lagerfeld. This is a classic vintage masterpiece. Okay, it was released in 1978. And it's a little fun fact that year, one of my favorite of the genre flicks came out Halloween. Halloween dropped in October 1978. Uh, created with John Carpenter, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, and uh, the infamous Michael Myers was born. One of the you know favorites in the slasher flick. So, just wanted to share a little piece of knowledge with you. I uh, probably already knew it, but and uh, man, there's so much to get into before I really uh, get into a lot of detail about the fragrance. Uh, I hoped with this series I could give people some information that they can use going forward uh, if they are looking to build a collection uh, that includes vintage fragrances. I know not everybody's into vintage fragrances, but I think you know you need to be balanced. If you're a collector of anything, I think you need to be balanced. I think you need to have you know some stuff from the past, present, so you can kind of know where you know fragrance is going. Uh, it's an art, and like any art, I think that's required. You know, I always bring it back to music because I love music so much, and I spin, and you know, I think it would be silly for a person to be a collector of music and not have anything from Miles Davis, not have anything from Bob Marley, not have anything from Steely Dan, Led Zeppelin. You can go on and on and on, but I feel like you need to, even if you don't like the artist, kind of find out what's to this legendary artist. What did they bring to the game? How did they change the game? Those are all things that I think are essential, and it translates right over to fragrance, man. I think you need to kind of know what were some of the cornerstone fragrances that actually took fragrance in a different direction. So enough of my rambling, okay? I kind of got some stuff written down so I don't miss anything. Um, oh, another, another piece of information. Coming soon in the series, I'm going to be hitting on uh, fragrances Halston 112 and Z14. I'm going to hit P.S. by Paul Sebastian, the original Perry Ellis, Drakkar Noir, uh, Bijan for Men and Women, and I'm going to hit a lot of other fragrances, but those are just some of the ones I'm going to be hitting early on and Fahrenheit, just to name a few. So, info on this particular fragrance. Um, perfumer is Ron Winograd, all right? and it's categorized as the Oriental Woody. Now, this was my dad's signature scent. My dad smelled great. I always thought my dad smelled great. He started rocking this fragrance, I wanna say back in like 80, 81. And again, the fragrance came out in 78, so it was still a relatively new fragrance. And what I remember is my dad got complimented a lot on the way he smelled, all right? So for that time, this fragrance as I remember, it was more, I think it was a kind of a progressive fragrance because it wasn't in the same vein as a lot of the very ultra macho fragrances were at that time. Very, very strong, very, very loud. Now, this fragrance is strong, but that's kind of where it stops. It's kind of a smooth, kind of sexy fragrance in my own personal opinion. Now, I know, you know, somebody from the now school, 2016, may smell it and not think that same thing, but, you know, that's what I remember about the fragrance and, you know, what was being said about the fragrance back in the day. And, you know, I remember women saying, mmm, you smell good, like when my old man would come around. So, um, you know, it's a, I think it's a great fragrance. I, I know it's a compliment getter, or it was for that time, and it was actually one of the first 10 fragrances I purchased when I started buying my own fragrances, 8990. So, 
you know, most people won't go out and buy a fragrance that dad wore. But I did because I thought it was a great smelling fragrance. Okay, so you say you're ready to buy a vintage fragrance. There's some things you need to be prepared to do. First thing you need to be prepared to do is to uh, go on the uh, message boards. You know, go to the review sites, Fragranica, Base Notes. See what these you know, cats are saying about the fragrance. The old school cats, the cats that wore back in the day, the guys that say, I had three or four bottles. I, I think it's important that you look and see what they're saying about the fragrance today. If they just recently purchased the fragrance because a lot of times cats will come and say, I, I had three bottles of that fragrance. I wore it back in the day. Uh, it's not the way I remember it. It's, it's super weak. It, it fades after an hour. You know, does, it's not as potent. It's not as deep. It's not as rich. You'll see all of that stuff. So when you see that, now it's time for you to do a little bit of research. First thing I would do uh, from this point is to go to Google, put the fragrance in, and try to do a, loose, a little search on the history of the fragrance, you know, and look at the images they have posted of that fragrance. When you do that, you'll be able to see one of the key, a few key things. One, what does the original bottle look like? What does the original box look like? I think that's so key. What does the font look like? You know, what it, it has the font been changed? Very key things to look for. Number two, you know, has the parent company changed or the distributor of the fragrance changed? That is almost the most important thing because, well, you know, what you can do is find out that information. Look at some of the bottles that may be for sale on eBay and look at the pictures that people would have of the bottom of the bottle and back of the box. That's usually where that information is going to be listed. When a fragrance changes parent companies or distribution companies multiple times, a lot of times there are changes in the quality of the fragrance. Sometimes they're not, but more likely there are changes. There are reformulations, and reformulations are a natural occurrence due to a lot of the things used to make the fragrances are natural resources and they're not infinite, okay? So those are the most important things that I think you need to, to check out. Once you kind of find out, you know, what were the early, uh, the, the, what was the early bottle style, the early font, um, you know, box, distribution company, parent company, once you get that information down, now it kind of like, it, 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 it lessens that little window of, you know, a range of time that you can actually look and say, okay, this is probably closer to the early time of when that fragrance was being produced. So I think I have a great chance of getting a fragrance that I can get and I can get it in all its glory, so to speak, so I can see what all the hoopla was about that fragrance. You know what I mean? That is going to help you to have a successful purchase, in my personal opinion. Now, Sometimes vintage fragrances can go bad. I've never had that yet. I haven't experienced it yet. But what I uh, can say, sometimes sometimes the top notes aren't as bright uh, as they used to be. So how do you offset that? I've read multiple people say what they'll do is they'll buy a brand new bottle if the fragrance is still in production just for the top notes. But, you know, they've got the heart of the fragrance for the most part and that vintage, you know, they'll like, you know, combine the sprays. So just something to keep in mind, something to think about. Now, we're going to get into this fragrance. I've got two different bottles, okay? This is the original, Carl Lagerfeld, all right? It's got a metal cap, and I don't know if you can check out that font, all right? This is... A little later version of Karl Lagerfeld. The juice is a little lighter, it's more bright orange, font is different. Now currently there is a bottle that is similar to this one except it says Lagerfeld Classic. Okay so parent companies or distribution companies. What I see on the more classic vintage bottle of it, the parent company is Bethco Fragrances. All right on the later version it's Parfums International Limited. Alright so now 
there is a difference in smell. What I've noticed is the original is more complex. It's got more nuances in it, okay? And just to be specific, I, I, I sprayed them both yesterday, tried it out, you know, went through the opening to the dry down, and this is what I got. So just for facts, all right? The original, you get the aldehydes, the bergamot, and the green notes in the opening. And actually, the citrus was, was still pretty bright, so it didn't really lose anything. Um, I also call it the jasmine. And I can smell the oak moss in this too. And it's got a lot of patchouli in it. As it dries down, you know, it goes to this like musk, vanilla, tobacco, and sandalwood. You know, really smooth, creamy, you know, honey kiss type vibe. All right. So the difference when you go to the latter, which is this bottle, all right, is that the opening is not as bright. It's not as green. It's pretty, pretty much just smoothed out, and you get the amber, sandalwood, musk, vanilla, and patchouli at different levels, you know, varying levels throughout the life of the fragrance. When it's pretty much at the end, it's pretty much this really smooth sandalwood, vanilla, you know, amber type fragrance. So I've read people say they like the original better. I've read some people say they actually like the current formulation better than the original because it's more smoothed out all right and so it's smoother than this one i feel like this is one that's from the middle and the current one has this font which says lagerfield classic so you know i don't know whatever you would prefer is what i would say you know go to i think if you like a more complex fragrance try to find the original you can find these online it's so funny i remember a time when this fragrance i i saw it everywhere i would see it in Walgreens, department stores, CVS, uh, Walmart, you know, now I don't see it as much as I used to. And when you look for it online, you can still find it all day long, but you only really see the box that says Lagerfeld Classic. You don't see this font, all right, this old school font. This is the font I used to see 24-7 everywhere. So I actually had ran out of this fragrance back in like the early 2000s and thought you know I can get it again I see it everywhere all the time it's not a big deal it's you know it's stock is high uh, I wish I would have grabbed a couple boxes back then because now to get this particular one like in a 4.0 it's, it's you can get it for like about between 80 to 100 bucks all right but you can get a one ounce online now for around 40 you know so if you want the original Vintage closest to the original formulation man grab this one this font. All right. I think you'll dig it and uh, Pretty much just to close it out man and not not ramble on too much longer How would I wrap this or sum this fragrance up man? This is a sweet smooth um, Honey like kind of powdery uh, henna tobacco Slightly barbershop fragrance very slightly barbershop, but slightly barbershop fragrance. And I think it's a masterpiece. I say it's a 10 out of 10, man. It, it, it smells great. It performs. It projects great sillage. I think cats would love it. Uh, but I do recognize some of the younger fragrance heads may not dig it. It's just a matter of just the time. It may have a certain smell that they associate with something that's older, and that's fine. You know, if you give a, a 2016 hip hop head Midnight Marauders by Tribe Called Quest to listen to, they may not like it. It's a different sound. Even though it's an incredible hip hop album, they may not dig it, you know? So it is what it is, but I just hope that I could, you know, help two people meet the new school fragrance head and the vintage fragrance. And they could, you know, connect and they might, you know, find that perfect connection where this could be one of their, you know, fragrances. That's what I want to do, you know, without any type of negative connotation placed on the fragrance because it's older. But a good fragrance is a good fragrance. So that's it, man. I hope you enjoyed it. I got more coming soon. Please subscribe, like, share. Rob DJ Bill. Peace out.